everybody and a very warm welcome to the latest episode of Hidden Jewels of Soul and Disco. I'm Nadine and if you like the channel, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. It's very much appreciated. When you'll be watching this, I might be on vacation. We see how work will allow me to have a little vacation on that. But anyway, I wanted to make a video for you. So this is a pre-recorded video you'll be seeing. And um, I thought I'm doing an artist who has been hardly known and maybe the records I'm presenting to you might be interesting for you. So this week we'll be featuring David Simmons. David Simmons started out at the beginning of the 70s. And he was friend with a very important person in the music business, especially in the 70s. And personally, I can't praise this man enough. Legendary singer, songwriter, producer, and he worked with the greatest of the greatest from the Philadelphia International label. Later on, he went to Sol Sol and worked with Instant Funk. Who I'm talking about? Well, Bunny Siegler. Bunny is not getting the recognition he should have legendary in everything he did. So if you have a chance, check him out. He's also responsible for, for one of the finest tracks on the album of the Three Degrees. This is the first album from the Three Degrees on Philadelphia International. And that's the song If and When, which is one of the finest ballads ever been recorded. So um, yeah. Check them out. Check the Three Degrees out and Bunny Siegler. Tremendously good. Well, after they went into group, had the hit single, nothing really much came out of it. Bunny Siegler went to Philadelphia International and um, David Simmons created a new group in 1975, which was called Neo Experience. And uh, the group also featured Vera Brown, which later became part of the Ritchie family. They had some singles out, like Human or Eternal Sunlight. But also this did not get out so much. The singles were okay, but it didn't sell well. David Simmons signed with WMOT Records and released two albums. And those are the two albums. Let's start in 1978 with Hear Me Out and 1979, The World Belongs to Me. Like I said in the beginning, no. Let's have a listen first. Like I said in the beginning, let's do it again. I was always wondering why David Simmons never signed for Philadelphia International. And the reason was very simple. It was because of this man. Legendary Teddy Pendergrass. If you look, they might look a little familiar, a little bit, um, and they also sound Familiar. Some people say that David Simmons sounds like Teddy Pendergrass. In my opinion, he doesn't. They sound familiar in some tracks. You hear, you hear it out, but it's not like that he sounds exactly like Teddy Pendergrass. But that was also the problem with David Simmons. Uh, first of all, the material on these two records are not on, in the same league as the one uh, Teddy Pendergrass did on Philadelphia International. 
We must say that the albums Teddy Pendergrass, also Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, did on Philadelphia International are one of a kind. You can't beat them. And especially Teddy Pendergrass is still up to this day one of the most sampled artists ever because of his uniqueness in his vocals. So um, yeah, that pretty much got in the way. Uh, if you have to choose between these records, I would um, recommend The World Belongs to Me. For me, it has the better vibe of music, the better songs, and it's a very enjoyable record. This one is not bad also, but if you have the chance, I would recommend this one. And the tragedy in it is was like that he had a f familiar voice, like the one from Teddy Pendergrass, and um, when these albums got out, music was also changing and pretty much that was the end of his career. In 1981, he did a duet with Cassie Sledge, All the Men I Need. And you will see now a snippet and that's all the footage I could find of David Simmons. So here's a snippet. When I kiss your eyes, I hold you close. And let go. I won't let go. In 2015, he released some music, one al two albums, one was called Smooth Me, and it was released on a CDR. So uh, that was it so far. And up to this day, David sings in his local church in Philadelphia. But he's very much unknown, which is a sad affair because he recorded some really nice tracks. Um, it's not his fault that he sounds like someone else or he sounds familiar like someone else. But um, you should check him out and give him a try. So that's it for this week. Um, I'll be in the Netherlands and I'll try to check out some record stores. And if I find something interesting, you can be sure I shoot some footage. I'm wishing you guys a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, listen to good music, and I'll see you next time.